Hello there, it's Sandy Allnock, and today I will be coloring ice cream. I'll be doing this on social media all week too because apparently summer is on its way to my house. After all my whining, yes, summer is coming. So let's go cool off. As I prepared for the heat wave that was promised by the weatherman, I decided to draw ice creams and make printables. So you can color ice creams as well. You'll see the sleeves of my sweatshirt. Yes, I'm still wearing a sweatshirt as I'm filming this and doing the recording, but tomorrow it's supposed to start warming up. So the printables, there's a lot of images in the folder that you'll get and it'll be a zip file. So there's some that have scoop ice cream on them and some that have the soft serve ice cream. There's two different styles of cones. So there's the cake cone and the sugar cone. And then some of them have toppings of various kinds on them. I did a real mix and match thing here. The soft serve at the bottom has three versions rather than two. So you get one that has sprinkles as well as chocolate, one that has just the chocolate and one that has just the ice cream. And it also comes in both the cake cone and the sugar cone. So you can just have your choice. And I'll show you these larger with just the printed images so you can kind of understand better what I mean because these are all colored and it's a little hard to tell. So here, here's a bigger version of the scoop ice cream. So it has, one of them has a cherry and chocolate dripping down on it. The other has just the ice cream. And then there's these simpler versions. So if you want to do your own shading, you can do that. And I'm gonna be doing that in the, the demo later in this video. Here's the same kind of difference with two of the soft serve ice creams. I didn't show you the one with the sprinkles here, but you can see the difference between a lot of detail or very, very limited line work. So we're gonna start by coloring the easier one, which is the soft serve ice cream. And it might seem like it's not easier, but the lines that I have given you and the shading that I've given you is really directive as far as what you need to color. So I'm gonna be putting color in, especially the darkest areas, and I'm gonna make this a half and half cone because that's how I order my, my ice cream because I can't decide which flavor I want, so I like the twist. And I'm just gonna put the chocolate on the left. And this is, I think, an E33. And then I'll use an E53 to feather it out a little bit and leave the right half being white. And that's it. I just, I followed along with the shading that's there and then just continued as if the shaded area was the darks and then moved into the midtones, which is the browns. That's like super easy to color that way. The cone on the bottom, I'm putting all my shading on the left-hand side and then just doing a little tick of the darker color inside those boxes for the waffle. And then getting some browns that will kind of merge alongside and, and over top of them so it'll soften all of that. For the other cone that has no shading in it, I am following what I see in the other picture. So if you're coloring the no line kind of version, follow along with the other one. So print the other one out and you can see kind of where the shapes are and what you need to follow. There's a, a small line for each one of these sections that's drawn into that one. It's not just, you know, like a big empty space for you so that you at least have some guideline to start with. But if you want to add your own colors and your own types of shading, that sort of thing, you don't have to follow along with all the details in the other one. I thought having both of these images though might be really good practice for those trying to learn their shading and trying to take those training wheels off so you don't feel like you have to have all of the shading drawn for you. But the images that are simpler, this one on the right that I'm coloring, has just bare minimum lines in it. So you have some guidance as far as what angle those shapes should be at and where the darks should be. But you can follow visually the other image in order to see where all that shading goes. And look how yummy that is. I mean, I just, I want an ice cream right now. I just want one. So I'm gonna be including all of the pieces that I'm coloring in this video in the collection of JPEGs, just so you'll have an example 
of one way to color this. You can also change it up any way you want, but just know that the shaded ones are all drawn in such a way that the shadows are on the left and the highlights are on the right. So you can't change the direction of the shading entirely that way. But nonetheless, I hope this is going to be something that will help you to learn your shading. So here I'm doing the same thing, little different colors that I decided to use in this waffle cone, but I'm using the darker colors on the left hand side and then going with a shade lighter to go over it so that I soften out all of those squares because this drawing again only has the bare outline of those squares. It doesn't have all the shading that the one on the left does. So in this image you have to do your own coloring of those and in order to soften them so they don't look like big messy blobs because I was just doing this quickly, I just went over it with a lighter shade. And that's going to help to just kind of blend it all in and help it to be a little softer so it doesn't stand out as much. So there's that one. Let's color the other one now, which is a little harder because there's just a lot more going on in it. This one got away from me. It got really complex real quickly because there's three different uh, ice creams in there. And I decided the top one, I had to get out my hex chart to figure out what the heck color is, is right for mint chocolate chip. And the basic color is about a G00 or a triple zero, something in that range. But then when I put down just that color, it didn't feel blue enough. So I started mixing in a little bit of blue greens and then I had to add some green greens. And so, yeah, it just kept changing on me as I did it. But the thing to know about these scoops of ice cream is that there's a horizontal texture almost, or a curved horizontal texture that you'll be able to see when you look at the, the images themselves that have all that detail in them. And then on the bottom part, that, that little roughly part at the bottom, the direction changes on all those little bits. Next time you scoop ice cream, look at the direction of the textures, because the way that you scoop it, the way that the spoon goes around and curves through the ice cream, it just creates a different texture on that, that cuff around the bottom of it. And usually there's a little bit of darkness that'll separate that ball at the top from the cuff. So put a little shading in between there. And then you can also put shading underneath on the next ice cream scoop. So there'll, there'll be a place where you can make a little dimension there. But on the picture on the left that has all that detail in it, there's not a lot of shading you really have to do. So it's a much easier image to color. But again, as I said, if you're interested in trying to learn how to shade without all that guidance, then the other image might be something that you might want to try so that you can start to build up your skills in being able to figure out where to put the shadows. Because I know that's hard for a lot of people. It's one of those things that I've always been able to see. And the more I practice it, the more I see and the more that I can imagine where things are, where highlights are and where shadows are. For instance, on the dripping of the chocolate, the, the way that something like chocolate that's ooey gooey and flowy, the way that that reflects light is very different than most objects. So lots of times you'll end up with just a highlight on the right side if the light is coming from the right. But when chocolate drips and it curls around, it's going to reflect light from all different parts of the room. And sometimes there's just one area that's going to be hotter or cooler because chocolate has a different texture on it. So don't worry too much about where you put some white highlights. Just leave a couple white spots here and there and you'll be just fine. So the one on the left doesn't need any darks added to it because it has the darks drawn into it. So I'm going to draw those same darks with a dark marker on the right hand side, that's going to give me those shadows. And then for both of them, I'll use a mid-tone to start to move around the chocolate and make it a little bit richer looking and start to cut down some of the white highlights. I tend to leave more white than I know I need because I can always get rid of white, but you can't add it back in unless you add it back in with a pen, which doesn't end up looking as natural as when you just leave it because you've, you've not colored it. So I'm just going to start cutting down on that as I work through my other colors 
and, you know, leave a little bit less of the highlight and you can see how juicy that chocolate ends up looking. So here's a trick for the dark chocolate at the bottom. So I basically just colored a blob of, I think it was an E29, and then went in with a lighter color and just went along the that cuff of the ice cream and then a little bit on the front of it. And that's it. Like I didn't have to add a whole lot more to it. That middle ice cream, I decided to make it vanilla. So I'm just gonna use basically some flesh tone colors and try to add a little bit of shading to it, but not a whole lot because it's still gonna look like ice cream because the one on the top and the one on the bottom look incredibly like ice cream. So don't worry too much about the one in the middle, but remembering the textures across that, the ball of the ice cream tend to be more horizontal and then the bottom ends up being all kitty wumpus, different directions. The, the cones down here are a little harder on the right-hand side because there's not a lot of guidance, but it's a matter of, for me, figuring out where the shadows are gonna be. So there's a shadow underneath that larger part at the top of the cone, and then that bottom section kind of pulls in a little bit. So there's a little shadow there. And then with the waffle cone bits, I'm putting a darker brown on the left-hand side and then switching to a lighter brown for the other side. So I get that roundness that it kind of morphs along with the rest of the shading that's already in the cones. So that's it. Both of these pictures will be in the set. Well, actually I'll even include that third one with all the little itty bitty ice cream. So you can kind of get an idea of what's in the set. And if you're interested, it's in the doobly-doo. And I will be all over social media with ice cream and popsicles and everything all week, as well as more ice cream here on Friday for my second video. I will see you then. Take care. Stay cool. And I'll see you later. Bye.